Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really honored and grateful to, to have the chance to participate in this unique event. Thank you so much to the representative ambassador of Honduras, Lisi Flores, as well as the permanent missions of Ukraine and uh, Letonia for uh, co-sponsoring this event. And it's really delightful to share with three um, individuals that are freedom fighters and inspirations and inspiration to all of us in Venezuela, um, Rihal Magro, Irving Cutler and Diego Arria. And thank you, of course, to you and Watch for your commitment to the cause of freedom in Venezuela and being so close to us and speaking out the truth. I, I speak from the ground. I, I see and I feel the despair of a population that lives under terror, humiliation, discrimination, and misery. From the instant a Venezuelan awakes to the time he goes back to bed, he knows he faces a system without law and deprived of all his rights. He, he knows also that every single one of its human rights is or could be violated with no consequence whatsoever to its perpetrators. In Venezuela, a complex system of no domination has been installed. The looting of the nation's resources by corruption, organized crime, narco-trafficking, and terrorism has led to the extreme that today Venezuela faces. Today, first, Venezuela is a failed state with no capacity whatsoever to give guarantees of human security. A whole generation is growing with malnutrition, without vaccines, without education, and even without their moms, their mothers. The severe humanitarian crisis that has produced the largest migration crisis in this hemisphere history is right now represents over 20% of our population, 6 million people. Second, Venezuela is an occupied territory. Over 60% of Venezuelan land is under the control of different groups, criminal groups, that exercise not only control of the territory, but of the economy and even social control. The violent clashes, clashes, the violent clashes that uh, among these criminal groups that are growing day by day represent a real and growing danger of an armed conflict that will uh, create further devastation, losses of lives, and even a bigger, a hu a bigger wave of refugees and displaced. And third, Venezuela has a criminal state in power. It is not a conventional dictatorship. It is important to understand its true nature and its links with uh, criminal networks, local and international. Maduro has been accused, as you have said, of massive and systematic violations and of human rights, as well as um, crimes against humanity. The evidence is, has been widely exposed for years, for years, in hundreds of courageous testimonies of victims and their families, and of course, of the permanent and perseverance of human rights activists and organizations such as uh, UN Watch and others. Um, I, you mentioned those reports on behalf of the United Nations, but I, I think there are at least five uh, ones I, I, I think were, it's worthwhile uh, signaling. First, the report of the International Criminal Court of its uh, chief prosecutor on December 14, 2020, who approved moving to the phase, the third phase, because it found grounds on crimes against humanity, such as imprisonment or other serious deprivation of physical freedom, of torture, of rape, and other forms of sexual violence, and persecution of a group based on political. Uh, motivation. Second, you mentioned the report of the fact-finding mission of the UN on human rights on September 16 that effectively found serious ground that Maduro and his inner circle uh, were material uh, responsible of, of uh, um, crimes against humanity. Third, it is worth mentioning the update of the report of the Secretary General of the Organization of American States that reaffirms that the regime has been committing crimes against humanity in Venezuela since 2014. Fourth, the reports of UN Special Reporteers of the High Commissioner of Human Rights. And, and, and 
and fifth, I, I think it's just to mention the tens of NGOs on, on human rights that have been denounced and tortured, such as the Casla Institute or the, the displacement of Venezuela by the guerrilla, Colombian guerrillas, such as Funda Redes, or the violations of freedom of speech, such, such as Espacio Público, or the way especially women have been detained in uh, social protests because of lack of services that had happened in the last month that have made photo penal. These are chilling numbers. The scale is huge, but sometimes statistics are cold and they vary the intensity of the pain of every single story, of every family, of every hope that has been destroyed. So I need to share this with you. I need to, to talk to you of what I've seen of the victims that I've talked to and, and share their pain and agony. Can you imagine the degree of despair of a Venezuelan mother in the state of Apure or Amazonas or Bolivar that resigns to give away her son to a guerrilla group because this group can give him what she cannot, food, feed him. Can you imagine the anguish of Diego Sarraga, the son of Guillermo Sarraga, a union leader of the refinery in Amway, who has been in prison. First, he, was, he disappeared for, for several days, but he's still in prison since November 20th because he alerted of the devastation for lack of maintenance of this, uh, uh, this operation, this facility, and he was accused of sabotage. Can you measure the indignation of Jose Gregoria and Elvira Pernalete, whose son Juan Pablo was killed on April 26, 2017. He was a student. He was 20 years old in the streets of Caracas by the, the forces and the repression of Maduro. What they felt when two days ago they saw Maduro, who's the culprit of his assassination, speaking at the Human Rights uh, Council of the United States, Union of United Nations. Uh, believe me, you would never forget the glance and the degree of pain of Rosalia. She's a mother of a young Venezuelan who two years ago disappeared, and she's supposed to have drowned uh, in, a, in, a, in a small ship that was taking a group of young women in a prostitution network from Paria to Trinidad. And she still wakes up every morning praying to know what has happened to her daughter. Can you imagine the pain of the wife and young children of Captain Rafael Acosta Arevalo, who was tortured to death by the regime, and he simply fell down dead in front of a, a martial military court. What else has to happen for an effective reaction to be put in place in order to stop this tragedy? How many more torture, disappeared, silence, or death? How many millions more of Venezuela have to run away from our country, taking their children in hunger? What has to be done? First of all, criminals ought to understand that there will be no impunity, that they will face justice and pay for their crimes. The complices of the tyranny that have benefited from its resources in other countries, and I'm talking even about other ideological linked groups or even governments, have been stopped, should be stopped. The tyranny has, should, should be called by its name. We are not facing a common or conventional dictatorship. We're facing a, a criminal conglomerate that systematically destroys Venezuela and represents the dangers of destabilization of the rest of the region. Can you imagine what, what it means that Venezuelan territory has turned into a safe haven for the Colombian guerrilla that dares to threat with murder the president of Colombia from our country? These Terrible crisis will not stop with humanitarian aid, which we need, but has to be stopped with the dismantling of a criminal and mafia state. We Venezuelans won't stop. 
we will keep organizing and raising our voices, but we cannot do this alone. We need you. Thank you very much.